guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be talking about a custom carnivore dinosaur hunter either game or mod but it's a aquatic creature mod so let's just jump into the I me mean, just showing them so first let's start with the maps and the first map is the shallows which would be your starter map it would be a relatively easy area to maneuver it would have a small area of land in the center of the map and yeah it's really not too much to this first map next we have the archipelago the archipelago would be your secondary map it'd be a bit more complex with some more ridges into the water and also it would have some circular kind of archipelago land around it it'd be slightly deeper water and a little bit harder to maneuver then we have the caverns, which would be an extremely hard to maneuver map, which really deep water. There would be little land to be on there, there would be very little land that would be like above the water. But there would be so many caverns that you just have to go through, and it would be a really crazy area to hunt aquatic creatures in. Then we have the reef, which the reef is a much simpler map. It has actually near no land, and it's also a little bit hard to maneuver, but it has lots of hiding places for creatures to hide in. Then we have the deep waters, which would be a mainly open map with a small air land area and a little bit of a larger land area, but the, this water would have extremely deep water for larger animals to swim in. Then we have the trench, which would be an ex probably the deepest area on any map, and there would also be a volcano nearby. And yeah, it's kind of just another simple map. Then we have the Ring of Fire, based off the real Ring of Fire in the real world, but... Um, it would just pretty much be a really crazy volcanic map that would be very hard to hunt in, it would be very dangerous. Now let's move on to the creatures. So our first creature is Kowekia, which would be our starter creature. It would be passive, it wouldn't try to attack anything, it would flee pretty easily, and... Yeah, it'd just be your starter creature, kind of like Parasaurolophus would be in Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter. Then we have Hanotis, which would be another passive animal, which would be pretty e pretty hard to hunt, kind of like the Ankylosaurus from the other Carnivore Dinosaur Hunter games. And it would be quite speedy. Then next we have Edustus, which would be a surprisingly passive creature, but. It, it would not flee unless you really did anything to it. And yeah, there's not much to these first three, which all three of these are passive and would not try to attack you. Then we have this next one, which I do not know how to pronounce, but it would be similar to Velociraptor, or yeah, probably just Velociraptor, and it would be a pretty fast creature and being hard to escape. Then we have Chronosaurus, which would be more like Allosaurus, and it would be a a pretty powerful creature, though it would be weaker compared to much later creatures. Then we have another creature that you do not know how to pronounce, but it would be similar to Chasmosaurus, where it would not do anything to you unless you damaged it at all, or disturbed it in general. But yeah. Then there's Pliosaurus, which would be your first kind of large animal, probably be similar to Spinosaurus, where it would hunt you down, and would be highly dangerous. Then we have Gigantophis, which would be a, a gigantic snake. It would be similar to Ceratosaurus or Gigantoraptor in the mobile ports of the game, and it would slither everywhere around, and also I forgot to mention I will be putting footage in between these of the um, original mods. These are just kind of placeholders because I don't really know what you would put in here, but I'll also put links to like the original things that I'm having these features based off of. Then we have Liaplorodon, which would be one of the largest creatures in the game, and it would be extremely dangerous. Then we have Mosasaurus, which of course would be another large creature, probably about the same size if not larger than Liaplorodon. And it would be similar to the T-Rex, maybe slightly weaker. And the absolute apex creature, which would be more like the Yeti from Carnivore's Ice Age, is the Megalodon, which would be the apex predator, and yeah, that's about it. 
Now next, let's move on to weapons, which I really didn't feel like doing much weapons, so just I'll put it on screen, but there they are. The first two are just harpoons, then there's a taser, two more different harpoons, and then the bottom two are also tasers, but yeah. Now let's move on to the ambient creatures plus one that's not quite an ambient creature, but I put it in this category. So first we put Squally Corax, which would be a probably a dangerous AI creature that would swim the oceans. Then we have this one, which I do not know how to pronounce, which would probably be a passive AI creature. Then we have Hybotus, which would also be a passive AI creature, but would swim in a little bit deeper waters. We have Archelon, which would be similar to the Brachiosaurus and Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter, where it would be a unkillable creature, it would be really big, and it would just be kind of just something you can marvel at. We have Nothosaurus, which wouldn't do much, you'd probably find it on the shores mainly. And yeah. Then we have Ramper, which would, would be our one and only flyer, which would fly around the island chains and maybe dip into the water every once in a while to catch some prey. And then last but not least, we have Ustrip the Spondylus, which is not planning to be an AI creature, but I would actually pick it to be a creature that you can hunt and would go to your trophy room, but the thing about the Ustrip Spondylus is you cannot pick it from your title screen, it would only be a kind of rare spawn and you can find it on the island where it would wander. And there'd probably only be one every few maps, every time you spawn in, and yeah, that's about it for these creatures.